Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. For today's video, I've got one in my end of the year wrap up. Yes, I just said that, end of the year. This is kind of bananas that this year has flown by so much, but I wanted to film a video that I filmed for the first time last year that I really liked that I wanted to make like an annual series where I share the top 10 products that I purchased that year. So I will do the series I always do at the end of the year. I do like best palettes, best drugstore, best high end. But with those, I usually stick to products that release that year. I do like a mixture of purchased and PR. But for this video, I like this style because we're talking just about products that I bought and a lot of these really aren't new. They're products that have been around, but I finally purchased them this year. These are 10 products that I'm so glad that I picked up, whether they came out this year or not. Let's go ahead and hop into it. I actually have a really great mixture of drugstore and high-end. I kind of thought it might skew a little bit more high-end, but we're almost 50-50 here. So let's start off with a highlight that I'm glad I picked up. Now, first of all, I was back and forth. I'm like, did I buy this in 2020 or 2021? Because it feels like I've had this for longer, but I actually picked this up earlier this year when I was testing other YouTuber favorites from the previous year. So this is the NYX High Glass Powder. So, I mean, you can see that I've used up quite a bit of this. The texture is similar to like a ColourPop Super Shock Shadow where it's very creamy. I like to apply this when my base is still kind of dewy and I just tap it over the tops of my cheeks and it melts in so well. It leans like slightly on the glittery side, like you can kind of see the particles there, but they are so small that I don't think it looks chunky. I think it just looks like kind of wet, kind of dewy, like glass skin like. But if you were to look up close, like there are little glitter particles, I will warn you, but this tone is just so beautiful and golden. I've heard they're discontinuing this line, which would be such a shame, but at the time I'm filming this, these are still on sale. It looks like they're half off on the NYX website, but like still full price at other retailers. So. I would grab this while you can because I don't know how long it's going to be around for, but it's such a good highlight. This next one you totally saw coming. This is the Bare Minerals Blonzer. Okay, I'm going to try my best to link it. There are like a few retailers that still have it, but Bare Minerals, if you're watching this, make this permanent. This is your best blush. So I picked up the shade Kiss of Pink and I have every single blush formula that they make. They make a powder blush, they make a, like a cream to powder blush, they make a loose powder blush. I have all of them and this is better than all of them. All, all the other ones are good, but this is amazing. And the fact that this wasn't permanent was such a mistake. They should have made this permanent and had like an even bigger range of shades. So concept wise, I don't think it matches the description. Let me start there. They call it a bronzer, so it's supposed to be half blush, half bronzer, like a hybrid. I would completely disagree. Like if you, it, it doesn't have enough of a bronzy tone to it. I would more so describe it as like a bronzy blush that looks like a sun-kissed, sunburnt finish on the skin. So it's incredibly glowy without being like shimmery. Like it just looks radiant like your skin is very healthy. Like it will make your skin glow even though it's a powder. Normally you put a powder blush on to kind of mattifies things. This does the opposite. It looks radiant but it doesn't look shiny. There aren't like noticeable glitter particles but the tone is like this perfect pinky color where it looks like a sunburn. Like look how smooth that applied. Oh my gosh. I can't say enough good things about this. The fact that this was not permanent, the biggest mistake. Bare Minerals, bring this back. Okay, who remembers at one point me saying, I'm not really a powder person. I have definitely said the line, a powder is a powder, a dozen times on my channel before, but this year I am a changed woman and I have two, two powders to talk about in my best purchases of the year, two powders. I don't have, there are like a lot of categories in here that I don't even have, but I have two powders. I never thought I would see the day, but the first one is the predictable one that you can say with me. It's the Kosas Cloud Set. If you've been here, you know this, you saw this coming, you were writing the list with me. You're like, she's gonna mention the bronzer. She's gonna mention the Kosas powder. I have to. This is a fantastic powder. It is a baked powder, but it's very lightweight, very blurring, very perfecting, and it, it makes everything look better. I, I can't spend too long on it because you guys already know how much I like it, but truly, one of my best purchases of the year. But a newer powder purchase that I wouldn't say is like super similar to the Kosas, but is also very fantastic and also has my heart 
is the LYS Triple Fix Powder. You guys made me buy this one. I had a lot of recommendations to pick this up and for good reason. This is different than the Kosas one because the Kosas one is baked, so the formula, it doesn't pick up like as much on the brush. This is just more of your traditional pressed powder, but even just now when I dipped into it, I know that the word buttery gets overused a lot while describing makeup, but genuinely there is not a better word to describe this than buttery. Like when I rub it between my fingers, it's so smooth. And again, perfecting, I would say both of these still leave a glow behind. So if you have oily skin and or you just, you want your face to look a little bit more set and matte, you won't necessarily get that from these unless you build them a little bit they still let the foundation or any of the glow, any of that base, they still shine through, but it kind of blurs the pores. It sets the skin a little bit, smooths everything out, but both of them I feel like still leave a really beautiful glow behind. They're both fantastic. Okay, if you ask me which one, because I know that you are going to, I know my comments are gonna be like, which one do you like more? And I can't answer that, that's, that's not fair. But I would say, I slightly prefer the finish of the Kosas one, but it's I, the LYS one is like way more affordable than the Kosas one. So I would just say, depending on what you're after, again, the LYS is more of a pressed powder. The Kosas is a little bit more baked, so texture is slightly different, but the finish is gorgeous for both. Let's switch back to drugstore. This brow gel is phenomenal. I have it in my brows right now. This is the e.l.f. Wow Brow, and I wear the shade Taupe in this. This is extremely similar to the Essence Make Me Brow, if you guys like that one. It does have a slightly larger applicator than I would like. I wish they would make this like a tiny bit smaller, but this is great if you like to add that fiber look to the brows. So this is pretty pigmented and it'll add a little bit of color, but it deposits so many fibers into your eyebrows, which really bulks them up. Like this will make your brows look way thicker than they are, which is great for those of us like myself that do not have a lot of brow hair that have very sparse eyebrows. This makes the biggest difference. And like I mentioned, it is pretty similar to the Essence Make Me Brow, but what I would say is the difference is the Make Me Brow is a little bit more of a watery formula, and I feel like the Make Me Brow performs best once I've had it for like a few months and it starts to dry out, you know what I mean? This one, I would say it's not dry, but it's not as watery as that one, so I slightly prefer the texture of this one. This is only, I wanna say the Make Me Brow is $3.99, and this is $3.99, so they're the same. Unless the Make Me Brow is $2.99. Let me Google this. Yeah, it's $2.99, but this is worth the extra dollar. Do you guys remember in 2020, I did the drugstore tag, or no, was it the drugstore? One of my videos, I was talking about drugstore and I mentioned how I don't get that excited about NYX. I don't buy a lot from NYX. NYX is just not one of my favorite brands. Well, in that video, a lot of you guys were like, wait, they have so many good products. You need to try X, Y, Z, like try this, try that. So I tried a lot from NYX this past year and three NYX products have made their way into this video, which I'm just finding so ironic when a year ago, I said I didn't really love NYX. So the first one was the highlighter, but this lip liner is so good. So this is their shade Nude Truffle. I got this because I was seeing it all over TikTok. It is a wooden lip liner. And I will say, if you like a super creamy wooden lip liner, I wouldn't describe this as that. I would say this one is stiff, but blendable. It doesn't drag on my lips. It's not dry, but it's stiff. Now, there's a little swatch of it. The color of it is kind of like a mid-tone nude, so I would say if you're around my skin tone, it'll be kind of like a mid-tone to deep nude on you, or if you have a medium skin tone, you might love this as like an everyday nude. I have one other lip liner that I picked up from them this year, which is Peekaboo Neutral. I just grabbed it from my purse because it was in my purse right before this. This one is a great dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk lip liner, by the way. But I would say in general, I really like this formula. So even if not the shade Nude Truffle, I would recommend any of these from NYX. I feel like they're very long wearing. And even though, like I said, they are a bit more of a stiff application, they're not hard to apply. I kind of like that they're stiff because sometimes when lip liners are too creamy, you don't get a very smooth line. You get like lumps. You can't really get that sharp effect. You can get that with this. Like I said, one more NYX product, but we'll get back to it. Another Kosas product. There are like a few standout brands in here. So I had the Kosas powder 
and the Kosas Concealer. So this concealer we've talked about before has just like the longest name ever, but I picked mine up in the shade 3W. Shade matching is a little bit tricky on this one, but this color does work for me. This does have a little bit of a scent to it, kind of just like a powdery fresh smell. I wish it did not have a scent though, but this is what the doe foot looks like. I know for a while there we were getting a lot of concealers with like massive doe foots and I feel like now we've returned to a standard doe foot size, which I do like. You do not need a lot of this. I just put a little bit on my inner corner because I have like the most darkness right on the inside. And the coverage of this is a nice medium buildable level, but it's not as thick as most full coverage concealers are. So you still get a pretty high level of coverage, like I said, medium to full, but it doesn't look cakey and it doesn't look heavy. You know what it really reminds me of? And I had this realization the other day. It's very similar to my favorite concealer, which is the Milani Conceal and Perfect Concealer. The finish and like the texture, very similar between the two, but the Milani is a slightly higher coverage and I would say this one is slightly thinner, but the way that they sit under the eyes is very similar. They're both extremely smooth. I'm so happy that I picked this up. One palette in here and it is this one from Natasha Denona. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Zendo. I've talked about it a ton this year. It like. Clearly, it's in this video. It's my favorite palette purchase of the year. This did not come out this year, but I finally went ahead and picked it up this year. They actually came out with the midi-sized Zendo this year. That one, the color story, I don't think was for me, but this one, I just love these warm, like rose gold, coppery salmons. Here are a few swatches from it. It's just such an easy palette to grab into. Whenever I'm reaching for this, I start with this in my crease, do a little bit of this on the outer corner and then this all over the lid. And then if I want to glam it up, I reach into the purple and the silver. It's kind of fun though, because even though it's only five shades, you can get some nice variety from this because you have the purple and the silver and the silver, if you pair it with the purple, you can turn it into more like a lighter purple. Or if you pair it with this, you can kind of brighten that color or you can combine these two. For only being five shades, there's more variety than you would expect in this little palette. Out of the four Natasha Denona palettes that I have, this one is my personal favorite. And this color right here, this one, yeah, this one makes every eye color pop. Blue, green, brown, does not matter. It will make your eyes pop. Okay, the other NYX product is the NYX Sweet Cheeks Blush specifically the shade Baby Doll. I love this shade so much. You are gonna see the swatch and think, whoa, that is so bright. And I originally thought like this color wouldn't work for me. I feel like this color would be gorgeous for like a medium or even deep skin tone. But even on myself, I still just love how bright this is. Like it's a bold blush color for myself, especially if I apply a lot of it, but it looks like you're rosy, like you blushed a little bit. This formula, I don't think works the best if you swipe it onto your cheeks. I do apply it like that sometimes and it works out fine, but I get the best results when I put it on my hand and then pick it up with a brush and tap it in or put it on my hand, use my finger, use a sponge, but just apply a little bit to the back of your hand or even like a makeup palette. I don't mean an eyeshadow palette, like a makeup palette, like a makeup artist would mix things on. Do that and apply it and then you'll get more of an even application. This is the most long wearing blush I've ever tried. It just stays so well. And specifically this shade, I just think is gorgeous, especially with kind of a matching lip color, a little monochromatic look, I love that. And this primer, I am not normally a primer person. Rarely do I think primer does anything, but this one does. This is the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer. This I'm pretty sure has been around for a very long time, but this was a subscriber made me buy it, purchase. And this, it's kind of like a gel texture. It's pretty similar to the Urban Decay All Nighter Primer in terms of performance, not consistency, because that one is a little bit more of a creamy texture, whereas this is a true gel. But this grips onto your foundation. It makes every foundation look better. It makes every foundation last longer. It makes everything go on smoother. Like, I cannot say enough good things about this. And it's $7. Like, Rarely do I recommend a primer. Rarely do I think a primer is worth it, but this primer is, and I'm so glad I bought it this year. Those are my 10 best makeup purchases of 2021. Stay tuned for the rest of my wrap-up series where we talk about more makeup throughout the year. That's coming soon, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.